Hey there everybody! Welcome back to our guide on the Rimworld of Magic. Today, we're going to be checking out one of the weirdest classes in Rimworld of Magic in my mind. That being the Bard, aka Entertainer, Performer, Minstrel, Bard. This is a very strange class, as they have practically no spells. Instead, the Bard primarily focuses on their three innate abilities. That's right, they've got three of them. These are all best shown by having a colony. So, welcome to our colony. Bug Pug's little home, where you see we have beer production, we have food production, we've got some butchering going on here. We've got some power generation, and look at those absolutely amazing beds. We've got some nice little rooms set up here as well. Holy crap, look at all this stuff. These people must be really happy, and indeed they are. Because you see, Bug Bug here is a bard. He inspires those around him through his unique social abilities. His first innate ability is called Bard Training. This allows you to hone the skills of the bard by undergoing training in performing arts, comedy, socializing, and inspiration. Each level will change the bard's trait to reflect the skills level. This will improve things such as social impact, negotiation, trade, but it will harm things like pain threshold, carry capacity, and work speed. So bards aren't very good at working, but are indeed very, very good at socializing and trading. If you're going to have a trader in your colony, it's worth considering having them as a bard. Entertainment, this is their primary ability. They entertain fellow colonists using a variety of methods. This skill has two components, a passive skill and an active one. The passive skill allows the bard to entertain other colonists in passive conversation. This command toggles on and off the active skill, the active ability casts a net over the colony that allows the bard to detect troubled pawns and attempt to entertain them. The bard will gain experience points when actively entertaining is successful. This requires 30 mana as an upkeep. The bard will perform entertainment as a job type based on the warden. So what this means is as Bug Bug sort of just exists, he will go and try to chat with colonists, improving their mood. As you can see, he recently had an entertaining chat with Innie Boris, where is Innie at? There we are. Had entertaining chat with Bug Bug. So if we go over to needs, we see social entertainment. I had a really fun time talking with others. And that's really neat. It's a distinctly useful ability to just generally give people a small boost in happiness. And if we turn on entertain, Bug Bug will begin to use that ability more actively, wandering around to the people with the lowest moods, trying to make sure that they're all happy. This ability is improved in three different ways. As you see, there's improvisation, increases how often the bard is willing to have social interactions, so this will just make them more social than an average character. Abundant laughter increases the chance to have favorable conversations with other colonists. Remember I said there are three ways to improve this ability, because the third way is to go into work and turn on manual priorities and increase the rank that they warden at. This means that now Bug Bug will prioritize socializing with everybody else over any other job he could be doing. So we're going to pump some points into our entertain ability and see how it goes. Alright, alright, so if you look at the characters' logs, you'll see when they have entertaining chats versus just normally chatting with people. And so we should see in here, as time goes by, he'll have more and more entertaining chats. The next passive ability is Inspire. The bard inspires other nearby pawns. This ability is always active. This one acts a lot like Entertain, in that when the character chats with other people, they can trigger what's known as an inspiration. Inspirations are things that improve people's movement speed, they will guarantee surgery successes, and so on. This can be upgraded in two ways. 
Charisma increases how often the bard will attempt to inspire his fellow colonists. And playwright, the bard learns new ways to inspire colonists. So at the lowest level, you can cause common inspiration. At level 1, you can cause resource frenzy inspirations. At second level, you can cause learning and social inspiration. And at third level, you can cause heroic inspirations that will improve mana, stamina regeneration, as well as experience gain. So we're gonna up Bug Bug's overall trainings here, and we're just gonna let him go and check out his log. Okay, so we can see he had a nice entertaining chat here with Annalise, and she's got social entertainment times too, so it starts expiring in 10 hours. She's got plus six to her happiness here. Honestly, it's, it's pretty fantastic. Hey, all right. So we see that Annalise has been inspired here. The next time she attempts to tame an animal, it will be successful regardless of difficulty. And if we go into Bug Bug's log, we can see that the timing correlates with when she was chatting with Bug Bug. Now, there's no way to directly guarantee that that's what happened, but I think with the fact that this occurred, you know, just a moment ago, and we can see that she was just chatting with Bug Bug not long ago, we can easily infer that that inspiration was caused by Bug Bug himself. Inspirations are insanely powerful. If we want, we can look at any animal on the map now and we can go, Hey, I want this mega sloth. Annalise, listen. Hey, so there was a misnote there. Apparently, you need a certain skill level in order to train animals. Annalise's animal skill was at four where uh, the required skill level was something like eight for most of the animals on the map. So I spent the next 20 minutes or so trying to tame an animal just to find out that uh, her skill was one under, I think, any animal on the map. All right, back to the video. All right, so we have this alpaca here. I want you to go tame this alpaca. You still have the inspiration of taming, so let's go. We're just gonna follow Annalise. Yep, Annalise, she's got the rice. She's petting the alpaca. And because she's got the inspired taming, taming chance 100%, it has joined the colony. Welcome to the colony, alpaca one. Now he's just gonna wander on home into our home area. Annalise, good job. And as we can see, as she's been getting on with that, Bug Bug's been entertaining people. And all of these people have been socially entertained helping them maintain a better mood. This is all pretty fantastic, because a bard can really help you hold together a colony that's struggling a bit. Not to say that all a bard does is help keep your colony happy, because they have a handful of abilities that'll help you out in combat, only if they've got teammates. The first one is Lullaby. Projects an emotionally soothing wave that washes away concern and consciousness that can put any creature in the target area to sleep, except for mechanoids, of course. So, yeah, this is just a nice little ability that'll put people to sleep if they're trying to fight you. You can upgrade this ability in four different ways. Earworm increases the chance the lullaby is effective by 10% per skill point, starting at 40% ending at 70. Deft Hands reduces the mana cost, and Resonance reduces the consciousness of the affected pawn. Works even if lullaby is resisted. Resonance is probably the first thing you'd want to put points into if you're looking to use your bard in combat, as decreasing your opponent's consciousness decreases a lot of their effectiveness in combat. The fourth way, of course, is to upgrade the ability directly. The first level allows it to affect mechanoids, it looks like, and every additional level looks like it probably upgrades the primary attributes such as range and maximum targets. As you can see, we have a handful of Cabalds attacking a nearby Scyther. If we go ahead and cast Lullaby over here, it decreases the consciousness of each of these creatures. 
No? What? So we can see if we want to cast Lullaby on our team here, we can just go and bam. Disturbed. Wait, it didn't put anyone to sleep? Did it lower anyone's consciousness? I'm not certain that Lullaby is working. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look like Lullaby is working. The next ability is Battle Him. Battle Him plays a rousing battle hymn to motivate and empower nearby allies. Each verse of the hymn adds to the effect and will further bolster the combat powers of allies. Each verse consumes 9% additional mana, has a small chance to cause inspiration that will further boost combat abilities. So if we all come out here, Bug Bug can use battle hymn to inspire all of his teammates. And it plays an absurd little tune I absolutely hate. And as we can hear, we can see our allies feel less pain, have improved manipulation, moving, blood pumping, improved tiredness, mental break threshold, pain shock threshold, melee dodge chance, and aim time. This can be upgraded in three different ways. Heroic Chorus increases the effects of Battle Hymn by 12% per skill point for each verse of the ability. It remains active and increases the chance of invoking an inspiration by 1%. Vocalist decreases the mana cost and Lingering Notes increases the range of Battle Hymn by 3 meters per skill. Also increases the tempo of Battle Hymn by 0.5. So if we cast Battle Hymn, everybody's affected by it. And now, what, each time those notes go off, they're affected again? Yes. Okay, so it's as the notes go off. It looks like they're affected again and again. And as you can see, as it goes off, uh, yeah. As long as you maintain it, it will have increasing effect. Bards also have a hidden ability that is Discord. Discord is a channeled ability that continually assaults the senses of the victim with random jarring signals. The sensory overload will gradually weaken, weaken their mental stability and gradually the mental harmony of the target will collapse altogether. So if we just go ahead and cast Discord here on Margria. Bam, we can see it hit her and immediately Discord has caused a mental haze. Fantastic. So as he sort of just channels this ability, Margri is gonna get progressively worse. Channeling abilities have to be maintained, it looks like. So if we go back to Margria here in a moment, we can see that Discord is no longer affecting her. Um, no effect on their mood or anything. Yeah, it's, um, it doesn't look like a particularly useful ability, I'll say. All right, so do we have to see our target in order to use it? All right, so yeah, do we have to see our target? That looks like a no. Mental haze, or distortion, unstable, overwhelmed. Okay, so it's a single target debuff. It seems to hit him pretty hard, but I'm gonna admit this doesn't seem very useful. And it seems very out of character for the bard, if I might say so. So, what do I think of the bard? I think the bard is a very entertaining character to have in your settlements. I think that they can really help a sort of fracturing settlement hold it together a bit longer with their entertainment ability. Battle him and Inspire can make an already productive settlement significantly more so. I wouldn't say that they're absolutely essential. I think that their combat abilities are trash. Discord and Lullaby seem to just not work. I mean, Discord works, but it's, it's not worth it. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that the Bard's worth having? I certainly do. If you guys are interested in RimWorld of Magic, I'm going to leave a link in the description to RimWorld of Magic as well as Cura's Class add-ons because I use both of them. As well, you can join us over on the Discord where we like to talk about RimWorld of Magic, Magic and Video Games, RimWorld, and modding video games in general. As well, I try to stream at least three nights a week over on Twitch where I play RimWorld using RimWorld of Magic because it just adds so much to the game. 
In the meantime, though, just remember, nobody cares. Thank you very much and good night. Oh, there's a grenade. Okay, so I assume we're gonna pull that. Th throw it. Ah, no. Ah! Ow, I hurt myself. Oh, holy crap. Thing is bigger than a grenade. Okay, we're just gonna take the grenade and. <laughs> okay, I killed myself in the training room. What's this? Ah! Ah, oh, God!